Hi, Bob. How's it going? Hi, Andrew. Great to see you. Can I just say I'm super excited to be able to like to just geek out with you on all of this stuff. <laughs> I've got some of the images right here uh, on my tablet, and and you're gonna walk me through what I'm seeing because when I look at this, okay, I just see a lot of lights, and it's very pretty. But but like, what, first of all, what am I looking at here in this picture? Is it like stars or galaxies okay. or something else? Every dot in this picture is a galaxy, not stars. So this is very, very far away. These are called deep field images, and it's a really neat trick that they do. They pick a piece of sky that is black, that other telescopes don't see anything. And it's a very, very tiny little piece of sky, and they just open the, the shutter on the camera for hours and hours. Like how like how far away am I looking, or or how long ago? Like, that, like that's the kind of the weird question, right? Yeah. Because space and time, when you're looking at these kind of photos, can really mess with your head. Yes, it can, because telescopes are time machines. The farther out you look, the farther back in time you see, because it takes light time to reach us. And this is 13.5 billion years. The universe is only 13.8 billion years. So we're pretty far back. But there's another interesting effect that's happening in this picture. If you zoom into those white blobs in the center there, yep. those are galaxies that are in the foreground. They're, they're close to us. And it's a three-dimensional picture, so the little red fuzzy blobs are in the background. But if you look around a bit, you'll see that some of the fuzzy blobs are arcs. Just go, yeah, just go in a little bit there, and you'll see that they're curves. Zoom in right there. Yeah, like and almost like those looking arcs at like are actually circles. distorted light. Yeah. yeah, that's that's called gravitational lensing, and it's the gravity of those galaxies in the foreground that have bent light and act like a lens to amplify the light of galaxies that are way, way far behind. And the whole point is to put together the story of the evolution of the universe. We're seeing almost back to the Big Bang. So it's kind of like putting together a movie from the very beginning. We know how it ends because that's where we are now, but we, we don't know how it started. <laughs> and Webb is going to really continue to do this much, much deeper than Hubble. Okay, what's the next photo that I need to look at? It's called the uh, Stefan's Quintet, and it's a series of galaxies, a group of galaxies that are stuck together by their own gravity. And again, zoom into the, the ones right in the middle there, and you will see that two galaxies are actually touching yeah. each other. Yeah, like almost. Uh, and this is a galaxy merging. This is what galaxies do. Is that a good thing or a bad thing that they're merging? <laughs> This is, well, it's sort of what they do. They start out as these beautiful spirals, then they turn up looking like footballs when they all merge. But this is going to happen to us because we are also part of a group like this. And we have a neighbor called the Andromeda Galaxy, which is just a bit bigger than our Milky Way, and it's heading towards us. And in a few hundred million years or so, we're going to look like that. Our two galaxies are going to be together. So for people in the future, they're going to look up into the night sky and we'll have two Milky Ways. We'll have our own, and then we'll have another one like that. There'll be like a big X in the sky as these two galaxies come together. Okay, you've already blown my mind, Bob, uh, but there are more photos <laughs> to go through. Yeah, there's a Canadian image here that I want to talk about because Canada is one of the three partners in the uh, Webb Space Telescope. And this image, it may not look as spectacular as the pictures of all the galaxies. It's just a graph. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at here is the atmosphere of a planet going around a distant star. And each one of those peaks, those those tops of the waves, is water. The so wait, wait, wait. So, so what does that mean? We're looking at one planet with water or signs of water, and right. therefore we can conclude what? Well, we can't conclude anything. I know where you're going, Andrew. You're going to say, oh, therefore there must be life on it, right? Sure. sure. <laughs> and that we would like to think that. Unfortunately, this particular planet uh, is very, very close to its star and it's very, very hot. Part of the Canadian contribution to the Webb Telescope is to look at all kinds of these planets and study their atmospheres to try to find one that's more like the Earth. That's the holy grail is to find another Earth out there. We have not found one yet and Canada may be the country to do it through the Webb Telescope. Okay. Bob, what's next? Carina Cliffs is where stars are being born. Oh, this so this actually this looks is, like a like a mountain, like cliff sides kind of. It does. It does. And it's actually a, a huge cloud of gas within our own Milky Way. So we're getting closer and closer here as we, we look at these pictures. And this is an enormous cloud of gas and dust, and it's where stars are being born. We came from one of these. I look at this and it looks like like mountain sides, right? It could be any any peak right. on Earth that we're seeing. But this is I mean <laughs> A little bigger. Yeah. Many thousands of light years across. I mean, this is uh, this is a huge, huge cloud. One of those little blobs, like, uh, yeah, just there at the upper yeah. left, that, that thing that's sticking up there looks like a thumb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's bigger than our whole solar system. Wow. So from here to Pluto would fit within that.
Okay, so what, what's this last one here? This, can, <laughs> this, this one freaks me out a little. Can I just <laughs> no. say? Because it looks like like an alien ultrasound, like a you know, like like a kind of like like no, extraterrestrial embryo. Am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is, except it's the opposite of an embryo. It's it's how a star dies. So we just saw an area where stars are being born. This is called the Southern Ring. And this is what our sun is going to look like in another four or five billion years. When some stars die, they blow off their outer layers of gas. And that forms this ring around that we see here. And we're seeing it again. And if you go into this particular picture, go really, really in as tight yeah. as you can, yeah, you you'll see that it's actually two stars. It's a binary. Yeah. And they hadn't seen that before. That's new. So we've got two stars here. One of them died. The other one's still going around it. And so we're putting together the life and death of stars as well. So there's still a lot to go. There's a lot about the universe we still don't know. Well, either. if there's anything I've learned from you over the years, Bob, it's that the next surprise is always just around the corner. So thank you so, you thank you so much for walking <laughs> me through this. This is great. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Andrew. <laughs>